Hello, good people. This must be model week because <laughs> I've been covering quite a few models and today I wanted to show you Quai Colors, yet another open source model that is catching wind and we can run it in Comfy UI fairly easily. But before we get there, we see here that they're promoting it as a photorealistic text image model. There's some pretty cool examples here. The photorealism looks great. Looks like they can do some various styles and even text. As always, I'm going to leave a link in the description below with all the information regarding this model. Now further down on the page, you see their open source plan. Currently what's available are the checkpoints, obviously, and IP adapter. I'm not going to cover that today. We'll do that in a separate video, but you can look for to IP adapter, face ID, LoRa's, and control nets to come. Like with most models, they do come with human assessment metrics and they compare it to like Dolly, SD3, Midjourney. Very favorable numbers, but we all know it comes to personal preference. There are more examples here that you can look through on what kind of images you can expect from the model. And if you were to go to their hugging face page, this is where you would find the weights. You would go under files, and under unit, you're going to see the models here. You could name them to colors if you want. You see there's a FP16 variant or the full model here. FP16 will run just as well as the full model. So you can download that one. However, you don't have to. There's an easier way to install the models. And also for the VAE, you can use the standard SDXL VAE. However, they do provide various VAEs here. Once again, you could rename them to whatever you like. Now to get started with colors, it's actually super simple to install using Comfy UI. First, head into your manager and in your custom nodes manager, you want to search for colors and you want to install this one, Quai Colors Wrapper. Click on install, then shut down Comfy UI and restart. Then you want to go into your main Comfy UI folder. In my case, it's in my D drive. So you want to open up the Comfy UI folder and you want to find the folder for your custom nodes. Under your custom nodes folder, open that up. And then you want to find the Kawaii Colors Wrapper folder, which is here. Let's open that up. And one more folder to open up, which is in examples. And then you're going to see two files here. The first one here is just named colors examples. That's your simple text to image workflow. The second one here is an image to image workflow. Simply drag and drop these into your workspace. Now, when you drag in the workflow, you're going to see this. Mine is arranged slightly different. I just move things around. If you'll notice the nodes here say download colors model, download chat GLM3 model. This is why we don't have to download the models manually. These nodes will do it for you. You don't have to touch anything here. The only thing you might want to change is this one. So you see the note here, it says text encoding takes the most VRAM. Quantization can reduce that a lot. So if you have a card that's 12 gigabytes or more, you're fine using the FP16 model. If you've got a card that's eight to nine, I'd even say 10, you can use the eight variant. Anything lower, you can use version four. Now in my testing, 8 and 16 are very close. You barely can see the difference. So based on your system specs, you can either choose FP16 for 8. I have it set on 8, but again, I can use the FP16 version fine. It's just a few seconds slower. And the card I'm using is the 3060 Ti 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, when you go ahead and generate your first image, it's going to download all the models that you need. So it may take a bit longer at first, but once it's downloaded, your generation times will be faster. And also don't forget to load your VAE. If you don't see a VAE here, it means that you need to download the VAE and put it in your VAE folder. You'll see it under models. Now, in terms of settings, I'm using 25 steps CFG of three. The schedulers, you'll notice that they're slightly different. I find Euler Discrete Scheduler, Euler Ancestral Discrete Scheduler work pretty well. I haven't really tried the other ones, but as always, you can experiment. 
This model reminds me a lot of Playground V2.5 where it uses a low CFG. So you can lower this to even two, say between two to four steps, anywhere from 15 to 30 is more than enough. 20 to 25 seems like a good sweet spot. In terms of speed, if you look at my last three generations, you see 20.57 seconds, 24.73 and 20.66. Now this is a bit high on my computer because I'm recording in the background so shave off probably a couple seconds. Once again we're using the quantized 8 variant. Obviously the FP16 version would take just a few seconds longer. Now I will say the model is really good. The color, the contrast is great. It's got a different style. It doesn't really understand all the styles that you might be used to with SDXL. It doesn't seem to know celebrities for example too well but there is one big flaw and I'm going to show you that right now. If we zoom in really close you can see it more so in the background here. You see this artifacting happening and it's even more evident when I generate like photorealistic images. You see it a little bit on the skin here. See those little dots? This is evident throughout the images. Now if you're doing more creative images you really don't notice it all too much. But if we take a look at this example here, I'm going to zoom in really tight here. You see that artifacting? This shows up quite a bit when you prompt for photorealistic images. Now I'm not an expert at training models but working at Playground there are some things that I've learned and this is evidence of using synthetic data sets. Meaning their data set probably had a lot of AI generated images in it. So to me this is kind of a big flaw especially nowadays where models are so good. Now this could be easily remedied by doing a refiner workflow and that's what you see here on the screen. Of course I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can download this, drag and drop, you're good to go. You may just need the models that I'm using. Now here's a little bonus tip for you. If you happen to come across errors where you get these red nodes, that just means that you're missing some nodes. It'll tell you which nodes you're missing. And to fix this, all you have to do is go into your manager here, click on install missing custom nodes, and it should tell you what you need to install. Now I deleted this on purpose to do this demonstration, but all you have to do is click install, shut down Comfy UI and restart. And then when you restart Comfy UI, your missing nodes should be installed. I'm just going to hit F5 to refresh and now you see the nodes have come back. This applies to any workflow that you might want to try out. Just be careful when you install nodes though to pay attention to the conflicts notice here. Like for example in this one, if I click it, it's going to tell you that it conflicts with this particular node. So as long as you don't use this particular node, you're fine. But if you happen to put it in your workflow, you might run into some issues. The only thing you can really do in these cases is try to update it and see if there's a recent version or uninstall it and find a similar note. We have the colors model here on the left. On the right I have it being refined with SDXL Realism Engine. I find those photorealistic models help to soften those artifacts. So here we go. Let's zoom into the face here. You see the artifacting here. Very very evident. And then let's look at the refined example. Now it doesn't get rid of all of it but it does soften it down a bit. And to be fair this is a very extreme example. And I can change the settings of the refiner workflow to cover it up even more. But I think that's fine. Like from viewing distance you can't really see it. But the way I have this workflow set up we have our samplers here on the left. I'm using Euler ancestral discrete scheduler for the colors model and then I have the SD sampler for SDXL here. You could use DPM++ 2M Keras if you want to and by the way Comfy UI has some new samplers Euler ancestral CFG PP. I haven't played around with it too much yet but it seems pretty good. You can use less steps. And then I have it color coded so you have your standard CFG here, number of images, image side, your seed. And then here I have the SD steps kind of high at 26, the color step at 17. Here's the prompt box area. These are closed because you don't need it. And then in this section is where the models are for colors. I can easily change to any of my other checkpoints here to load your VAE. And everything else here is closed 
just to save space. Now I have this set up this way because typically on my widescreen monitor is where I work and this workflow fits a lot better so I could just change my prompt here, generate some images, easy access to my checkpoints. I can change my settings all in one place but it's a fairly simple workflow. And if you're wondering why you don't see any pipes, if you go under settings, you can choose to hide them. Normally I have them as straight. You'll see all the pipes are at the back. If we change this to spline, that's where we'll get all the noodles dangling about. So it's up to you if you want to use this workflow. I personally like it. Of course, you can experiment with your own settings. You can move these around. I haven't pinned them down. And you may want to try a different stable diffusion checkpoint. Now, earlier I mentioned it uses a different text encoder. And the word on the street is that if you translate your prompt to Chinese, you will get better results. So I'm going to try it out. I'm not going to use the same seed, but I'm just going to do a Google Translate of this prompt. And I'm going to paste it into to the positive prompt here and generate the image. Wow, interesting. The style totally changed there. So I don't know if it has to do with the way it translates words that makes it look different, but the previous images we were looking at all kind of had the same style, same look. This is totally different from what we were seeing. Let's try one more prompt. So yeah, really interesting. The basis of the prompt is a cyberpunk woman wearing futuristic clothing. Of course, there are more details in the prompt, but here's the English prompt versus the Chinese translated prompt. Very interesting. I like the translated version much, much better. I will say in terms of prompt adherence, it does seem to follow the prompt to some extent, but I think because it's a different text encoder, it translates things a little bit more differently. As in these examples, you see, it does steampunk very well and the element of photorealism is pretty good other than the fact of the artifacting. It does Bruce Lee really well. Surprise, surprise. And the color in contrast is really good, but it burns easily. So once again, use CFG between two to three at the most. But going back to how it translates your prompt, it's kind of refreshing because it gives different perspectives on prompts that you would do with like SDXL, for example. It doesn't feel like a base model. For example, raw SDXL, it's kind of black, but with this model, it's got a lot of style. It's pretty creative and it has some artistic flair. I think it would be fair to compare it to other models because this is fully trained. I know I keep mentioning it, but the artifacting is a huge issue to me personally, but the other open source models that are available don't have that issue. So I don't know, you tell me, what do you think of what you've seen so far? If you've already tried colors, I'd love to hear in the comments below what you think. Now, in case you haven't heard, there is another beta model out called AuraFlow. I did do a video the other day right here. Make sure to check it out. And until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.